Hey everyone, my name is Mo Chen. I work as a data and analytics manager. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the five things, the five areas I think you should be looking out for when you're faced with a new data set. The way I'll be breaking down this video is that I'll be using a practical example. So I'll be using an actual data set to show you the five things that you should consider and you should do when you're faced with a new data set. And I'll do this with two tools, Microsoft Excel and Python as well. So I'll do a little bit of coding, but nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Don't be scared at all. I'm just doing this to show you that there's numerous ways to solve the same data analysis problem. As always, all of the links to any of the files you'll see in this video will be in the description below. So make sure to check them out and try and recreate exactly what I did in this video. So without further ado, let me just jump into the data set. So this data set is a very simple one. It's from Kaggle and it's on the Google Play Store. So it's just applications, data on various Android applications. Let me just adjust the column widths and here we go. You see the app names in column A and then you have various columns with various attributes like category, rating, reviews, size, installs, so on and so forth. So the first thing you should be looking out for when you're faced with a new data set is context and relevance. You should be asking yourself questions like, where is the data set coming from? How is the data sourced? How is the data collected? How often is the data updated, for example? Are there any potential biases in the data? If there are, what are the risks and the implications? These are the questions you should be answering and these are the questions you should be asking yourself. Now, let me move on to the second area that I think you should tackle when you're faced with a new data set. And it's all going to be around data quality. So in this case, let me actually just fire up my Jupyter notebook and we'll use some code as well. And I'll be using Microsoft Excel too. So first of all, let me just use some code. And I already wrote some here just to save you from watching me type in code. So first of all, I'll walk you through the code, obviously. So what's happening here is that I'm importing pandas and then I'm just reading in a data frame. Nothing crazy happening here. You'll see that it's going to happen in about a second. There we go. It did. And then let me just give this a little title right here. So we're doing, what are we doing here? Data quality. That's the second thing you should look out for. Data quality. And then within data quality, the first thing you should do or one of the things you should do is check for missing values. I think this is a super easy one to do. So using code, it would just be this. And I'm not going to explain the code. That's not the point. But if I check for missing values here, you can see that the rating column has 1474 missing values. Content rating has one and then current version and Android version, they have eight and three missing values respectively. Now you can of course use Microsoft Excel, for example, to check this. And there you go. Let me go into the rating column, put on a filter. So you can use the shortcut control shift L and then you have your filter on. And then if I just filter the ratings only for the missing values. So I have an AN on the bottom here. Then let me do a count on this. So I'm going to click into cell C25 and then control shift. Whilst I'm holding control shift, I press down to select everything. So now you can see that I have 1,474 here at the bottom. I know it's hard to see, it's pretty small, but it's just a good way, I guess, you know, just to double check everything that we have. And let me just go back to my Visual Studio code. And we had 1,474, and then we also have 1,474 as I selected here, you can see right here on the bottom. So missing values, it's really important to check and it's really easy and quick to check. So what's the next thing you should be looking out for? You could also look out for duplicates, for example. I could also, again, do this in uh, Python. So I come in here and then let me just put the code right here. And if I run the code, you can see that I should have 483 rows of duplicated data. So these are rows that are exactly the same. Now, of course, I can also do this in Excel. So let me just remo remove the filter, go into data, and then you can clear everything. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate my sheet. So you can hold down control and then just drag and drop the sheet. So let me duplicate this one. And what I'll do is I'm going to go to, yes, data, and then go to remove duplicates. 
and just hit OK. And the interesting thing you see here is you see I have 483 duplicate values that were removed or that were found and removed. Same as in Python. Again, tooling is just tooling. It doesn't really matter that much. There's many ways to solve the same problem. And I think I just proved it right here. Whether you're using uh, Excel or you're using coding in Visual Studio Code using Python, same thing, 483. It's just a different way to solve the same problem. All right, so moving on, what can we check? What else can we check? Number three will be data structure and types. So this is going to be a super simple one. Let me just put it here. I'm going to turn this into a markdown cell and then let me type it in data structure and types. And I know this video is not super structured. It's just one of those where, you know, I'm doing some data analysis or I'm checking a data set. But I think you guys really enjoy these unformatted, unedited types of videos because it's true data analysis, right? It's just literally me using various tools, sitting here looking at a data set, talking to you guys and walking you through what I would be doing. So data structure and types is also a thing you should look at. And it's the third area that you should look at. So we covered context and relevance so far. And then further up here, we also covered data quality. So data structure and types, a really simple thing I do is I just check the shape of the data. So you can do this in Python, obviously. And uh, this 10,841 and 13 means that you have 10,841 rows and 13 columns of uh, data. You can also, of course, check this in Excel. So what you can do here is go into your data set. And what I do is you, you just do a simple count, right? So if I hold down control and shift, press down arrow, then I have, uh, oh, I already removed the duplicates here. So let me go back to my first sheet where I still have the duplicates. So if I select everything, you can see that the count is 10, 8, 4, 1. And then if I select all of the columns, then I have 13 columns, you can see right here. So that is correct. Again, the exact same result using either of these tools. So the next thing you could check is data types, for example. So data types, they just mean, you know, like the actual field type. So category here should be category. It's hard to see in Excel, to be honest. Uh, and this is a CSV file, so it doesn't really retain the metadata information. But uh, it's a lot easier to see in Python in Visual Studio Code. So let me just go back into my uh, code editor. And uh, if you use df.dtypes, it'll just give you the data types. And now you can see here that basically everything is an object, which is incorrect. It recognized rating as a float, so as an actual number, which is correct because it is a number. And then what we can also do is say, for example, if you wanted to count how many columns you have in each type, you can also write code for that. So we have 12 object columns and then one column of float 64 data type. Let me just go back to Excel because obviously you have the user interface and it's more visual. So if you look at the uh, rating right here, you can see that, yes, it is correct. Float 64, so you have decimal numbers here. And the thing I can quickly check here and I can quickly show you is, for example, column K, which should be of date format. So if I go to home here and I go into general, I should be seeing uh, a date format here. So if I turn this into short date, nothing actually changed. Let me change back to general. So now I'm going to hit Control C to copy it and I'll paste it here and I will just paste it as uh, values. So when I paste it at values, you see right here that it's not actually a date because Excel would recognize a date. And let me show you what I mean. So if I type in 1st of January 2020, you'll see that this now is in a date format. How do I know? Because if I copy this with Control C, and let me just paste it right next to it as values, you can see that I get this number 43831. So that's of date format. And I know because when I turn this cell into general, I'll get that 43831. So that's of date format. So make sure you check your data types and obviously make sure that the data types in your data set are correct. All right, so moving on uh, to the fourth area or the fourth thing you should cover, and this is outliers. So when I'm talking about outliers, in our case, I'll do something honestly super simple. So let's first look at minimums and maximums. 
So let me turn this into a markdown field, give it a heading, and I'll call this outliers. Okay, so if we're talking about outliers right here, I have this little function that will identify the minimum and the maximum values. And then let me just uh, put this one in here. And if you're wondering why this says example usage here, because I use ChatGPT to write the code. It's that simple. So there's no shame in using AI. Actually, I use AI for a lot of things now, because the way I look at AI, it's my personal assistant. So think of it this way. Let me give you an analogy. Before, when I had to do a job and I compare it to like a marathon, I had to start all the way from the beginning, so from kilometer zero. But the way I look at AI now is that because I know how to prompt the tools, it lets me start my race, my marathon, at the 10th kilometer mark. So it makes things just so much easier and quicker. All right, anyway, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find the minimum and the maximum values for the rating column. And you can see here that the minimum is one, which, okay, makes sense, perfect. And the maximum is 19. Now, that doesn't make sense because the maximum value should be five. So that is clearly an outlier, something we should deal with. And another thing we could do, we could check for the five smallest or the five largest values, for example. So let me run this code. And you can see that the five smallest values are all ones, which makes sense. And then the five largest values, one of them's 19, the rest of them fives. So they look fine, except the 19. You could, of course, do this in Microsoft Excel. So let me go into the rating column, that's column C. And you could sort it, smallest to largest. There you go. Or you could sort it largest to smallest. Let me just remove the NANs. And once you do that, you can see that this 19 here is clearly not correct. So that's probably just erroneous data. That is not correct. Let me remove all of the filters and we're back to our original data set. All right, so that was area number four that you should be covering. So let me move on to the fifth and final area that you should be looking out for when you're faced with a new data set. And that is all gonna be about data distributions and summary statistics. So let me just show you some code I wrote here. Let me jump back into my code editor. And all we're gonna do here is find the mean, median, and the mode. And of course, I use ChatGPT to write this code. It was super simple, it was super quick. It's just a function that's gonna return the mean, the median, and the mode for whatever column I'm gonna pass into it. So the column I'm gonna pass into this function is obviously gonna be the rating column. It's the only float column that we have. And you can see that the mean is 4.19, the median is 4.3, and the mode is 4.4. Now, of course, let me jump back to Excel. You can do this in Excel as well. So now let me just uh, sort this from smallest to largest. For example, let me make this column a little bit smaller. Actually, let me make all of them just a little bit smaller. So let me adjust the column width just a little bit here, maybe 10. So you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so first let's find the average, the mean. And all I'm gonna do here is select everything within here. And let me see 4.1933, which is unsurprisingly, the exact same number that we got when we coded this thing up in Python, no difference. Next thing, let's try and find the median. All right, so that was the mean, we'll find the median and we'll also find the mode too. All right, so the median, well, guess what? Excel has a function for that, the median function, fantastic. Let me pass in everything in this column, median 4.3, let's cross check. Yes, 4.3, that is the same as the one I coded up in Python just now, and the last one, mode. And again, Excel, of course, has a function for this as well. So let me just select everything, and it's 4.4. So unsurprisingly, we got the same results. Again, tooling does not matter. There's numerous ways to solve the same data analysis problem. And let me just do one more thing here because we talked about um, distributions, data distributions here, right? So let's create a histogram. I'll do this first in uh, Python, just because why not? And I'll, I'll actually, I'll only create this in uh, Python because it's a little bit difficult to create it in Excel. I think it's a little bit clunky. So let me just use Python only. Let me just show you this uh, histogram. This is a function that again, ChatGPT wrote, it's super quick to write it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a histogram with 50 bins for the rating column. 
Now, what you see here is that the ratings obviously are super skewed by that one outlier, that rating of 19. So you can see that most ratings are in between, I would say, probably four and five. And then there's, there's this one line here that goes all the way out, all the way out here. And that is because of the outlier that we have. So what can we do about it? Well, we could just exclude that value. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna exclude that value right here. So you can see all that's happening in the code right here is that I'm saying that select all of the values from that data frame where the value is not equal. So this exclamation mark equal is basically not equal to 19. And then give me 50 bins again. So if I run the code, you can see that the histogram looks much nicer now that I removed the outlier. And that was it. That was my five tips or the five areas, the five things you should consider when you're faced with a new data set. So just to go through the whole thing again, actually I could probably just type up the first thing here. So it was context and relevance. Context and relevance was number one, and then data quality was number two. Data structure and data types was number three. Outliers, number four, and then the fifth one, I didn't even write it anywhere, did I? But it was data distributions. So let me put it here just for completeness sake. It was data distributions and summary statistics. So all we did here is we got the mean, the median and the mode. And then we also looked at a histogram first without removing the outlier right here and then with removing the outlier right here. And I'm afraid this is the end of this video. If you like this video, you should definitely check out Mo's Office Hours, my newsletter, and all of the data analysis resources that I have on my website at mochen.info. And you should probably also check out these videos right here. Thank you so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this. And I shall see you in the next one.